Hello and welcome to Velocity Talks. My name is Christopher Durham and I'm the president of the Velocity Institute. This, of course, is my regular opportunity to talk to the cool people in private brands. This week we have Danielle, used to be Beal or Kidney. I, I always get your name wrong, so I'll let you do it because it's like stuck in my head before she was married. All the way from California, but you'll notice she has a bit of an accent. Danielle, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Absolutely. Danielle, tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born in the UK, as you can tell, and my dad is American and my mom is British, but I grew up in the UK and I live here in Los Angeles with my husband and my two kids and my dog. And I've lived here almost as long as I lived in the UK. So I moved wow. in the mid 2000s. So it's been, yeah, acclimating to the West Coast and the weather. So let's talk about a little bit of your story, because I feel like that kind of gives you some reference points for what you guys do in private brand. How did you get involved in private brand in the agency world? And give us your backstory. Yeah, certainly. You and I have known each other a long time. I was trying yeah. to pinpoint if it had been 17 years or maybe. Uh, probably uh, pretty close. <laughs> yeah, I did my industrial design degree at Brunel University in London. And part of the program was a study abroad exchange, which was super fun. And some of my roommates went to Milan. And the second half of the exchange was actually San Francisco. So I lived on the West Coast for a semester abroad in the early 2000s. And then I went back home and graduated. And then fast forward to getting my first job in design, I worked for a London-based packaging agency called P&W, and their biggest client was Tesco. And so- Not a small retailer, yeah. Yeah, only the third largest retailer in the world. And so we had this real deep dive in creating their premium tier, the finest range over 20 years ago. So it was pretty cut mm -hmm. cutting edge. And I worked in the London studio as the studio manager, and I coordinated the goings on, helped the design team. At that point, I like to age myself by saying we used to courier photography files across London on bikes wow. because the files were too big and they were burned to disk. So that's that what we used to call sneaker net. Yeah. So we, we, yeah, so I was there in the London office for a couple of years. And then in the mid 2000s, we were invited as part of a couple of partner agencies to Tesco to come out to California to help them launch their US venture fresh and easy. And so it came out, I came out for a project for a couple of months to help them launch the first phase. And it was still mind blowing, but around 600 private label SKUs in under six months store wide. And so that project turned into coming back out every other month for a year. And then finally in the late 2000s, actually moving here and building the business on behalf of PNW. And I worked there for close to a decade. And then again, a decade ago, I founded the Creative Pack and that was an exciting step forward. I had built a small US team, a couple of designers and a project manager. And there was a lot of change going on at Fresh and Easy at the time. There was a private equity acquisition. And through all of that, I founded the Creative Pack, kept the design team on and built the business from there very organically with matching the number of people to the work that we were producing, winning some other private label clients. And yeah, it was just a fun adventure that's been going on 10 years now, 10 years on the previous one. And so the footnote with Danielle and I of our little history and private brand and all of that is 12, 13 years ago. I don't know. Oh, at least 12, maybe 13 I called Danielle and said, I have this idea. We're going to, we're going to do a, a design competition. And could you guys, cause she was with PNW at the time, help us with the logo and, and the branding work for it. So Danielle actually led the creation of the original Vertex Awards 
of branding. So that was super fun. And it's yeah. come a long way since then. Yeah, it certainly has. We go all the way back to when you were at Lowe's. There was a packaging RFP and we got together on that to present. So yeah, it's been a long road, obviously fun and definitely so much change in the industry since I've been living here, which is very welcomed because I was shocked when I first moved here at the yeah. state of the I know you would call me and go, are they really doing that? I'm like, yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. People were launching new things, but they looked 15 or 10 years older than they should. And I was very confused. So I've been lucky enough to be a part of a new wave of good looking packaging designs and really innovative products inside the package. So that's well, and over the years, you and your team have done very well in the Vertex Awards. You've judged the Vertex Awards and you've been out and about being a thought leader in what we do. So tell me more about your business. So you're woman owned, obviously. There's yes. very few agencies in the U.S., much less the world, that are woman-owned. So we always yeah. love to see that. And I'm Tell glad you told me you... that before I started because I didn't realize I was up against it. You know that now, though, right? I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're female-founded. We're actually a, almost predominantly a female team as well. So I have two, three senior designers that I've worked with for over a decade. And then I have a couple of middleweight designers who came on board at the beginning of their careers, either came on as an intern or a part-timer who became full-time. So I've seen a lot of growth in my staff. And I really like to do that. I really like to mm -hmm. see what talent is happening. Obviously in California, we have a bunch of design schools. So we go to their graduate events. We do portfolio reviews to give feedback to new designers and it's a great way to keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the world and alumni our staff bring us on bring us some people and it's really a good way to give back to the design community by taking emerging talent and kind of teaching them the ways so yeah we're a small team under 10 people and a fun fact is that this is our 10th year. Wow. And between us being a female team, we have nine creative pack babies. Wow. So I have two, one of my other designers has four and the other two have two and one each. So we're matching the years in business by the number of children we're having. So, so you yeah. made your own little creative pack though. Yeah, we've made our 2.0. <laughs> I know several of your designers have been out and joined us at Velocity over the years. Was it Emily was here last year, I think? Yeah, we've had Emily go out and yeah, it's been a really cool way to have them just get under the hood a little bit of how it works and who's involved. As you look across the, the private brand industry, you have a lot of experience both here and, and in the UK, big retailers, small retailers. What do you really see? What does the future look like? Where should we be going? Yeah, that's a great question. Being so much a part of the world of private brand is really exciting because you've got the connection between the retailers who are coming up with new ideas and you also have a ton of commands and supplier base who you really get to meet and form connections with and sometimes there's opportunities to ideate new products that they're developing and bring them to market on behalf mm -hmm. of the retailers so that's something in the last couple of years that's been pretty exciting is actually discovering new products and new innovation through that chain of hundreds of suppliers across the US and building those relationships. So I think the future is bright. I'm also seeing ebbs and flows with dabbling in premium tier products mm -hmm. over the past couple of years, and now really offering people during potentially some economic challenges and cost of living increases. There's been some really good kind of entry level, basically basics tiers that we're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of retailers launch, but they're not just value products inside. They're really good quality, really good price. And I think that's 
really innovative that you can match what you can put on shelf to what the consumers need at the time. And you can see how that evolves and changes. So I think it's a pretty exciting time. I think we're seeing large ranges and we're seeing new emerging brands also fueled by innovation. So you've got this white space still to create and innovate and promote. And I'm seeing even more um, retailers doing such a good job of the merchandising of private brand where before it was a put something on shelf and put something next to it. Now it's building entire end caps, foyer displays, just a ton of proudness around what the teams are creating. And that's very fulfilling when you go in store and loud and proud. I don't think we saw that 10 to 15 years. Oh, no, not at all. I mean, it, even just the emergence of seasonal sets, pumpkin spices and all of these yeah. things. 10 years ago, that stuff didn't exist anywhere but Trader Joe's. That was yeah. it. <laughs> so to walk in a regular grocery store and see generally pretty well-designed product that's mm -hmm. tasty in a mainline grocer that's on the front of the store and they're proud of it, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm definitely. We just had our teams out during the holidays doing a holiday review. We like to go out and see what's out there and then document it because as packaging lead times are months, so mm -hmm. you need to start working on those initiatives in Q1 and Q2 if you want to land some exciting products for the end part of the year. So yeah, it's definitely fun to see all the new flavors and even the fusion of certain flavors on snacking products that you wouldn't have seen before stuffing flavored popcorn we yeah. saw some really cool whipped cream flavor profiles that are just fun and exciting and no even a novelty item i think helps keep people's interest when they're shopping so absolutely i think that's really what brings people back no nobody's coming back because you had Fake Cheerios. They like you to have them. It's fine. But, ooh, I got that salted caramel spray foam. Or Yeah. I remember we did a unicorn range for fresh time. And we oh, took yeah. across a bunch of different products. My daughter was at that toddler preschooler age where she was obsessed with everything unicorn. And it was just a fun and they were right on trend because that was when Starbucks had all the unicorn stuff. Yeah. And yeah, that's exactly where we should be. So talk about the year ahead for you a little bit. What, what do you see coming for uh, the creative pack? Yeah, I think that it's been an interesting couple of years. We've obviously know that there was a lot more people shopping in grocery stores than they were able to necessarily go out into restaurants. And we saw the emergence of meal kits for home chefs. I think this year will be hopefully a little bit more of a stabilizing of your regular experiences and shopping. We're definitely in a new phase being our 10th year of business. So we've got a certain amount of maturity and experience in the field, which I think is good for both new emerging retailers and disruptors, as well as the conventional and natural channels. We did just move into our own studio space and we've built out a small photography capability. So now we can do some product and packaging shots. We can do some lifestyle imagery just to extend our capabilities for our current clients. I know that private brand struggles a little bit with the marketing and the promotion. So you put a lot of effort into the product and the design and you launch it and then it's hard to have the budget to put together ads and promos and shelf talkers and things like that so we're um, expanding that capability this year which has been really fun even for our own benefit of taking our designs that we've done and then putting them into real mm -hmm. environmental shots so that's been really cool and just getting the team back together, just the connection again. We've obviously worked out how to have client relationships remotely, how to manage teams remotely. But if anyone knows the creative industry, there's all the in-between times when you're not on Zoom, when you want someone's opinion on a design or you want to brainstorm. So now we have this space that 
we can get together and we're doing a hybrid approach. Well, and sometimes you just want to hang things on a wall or write on them with a Sharpie. Yeah. And can you do it on a computer? Sure. Is it the same? No. <laughs> and also have lunch together. Like we are a very close team. As I said, we've gone through life changes together. People have gotten married, had children. Like it's really nice to just sit and have a meal together and just so much excitement around reconnection, I think this year. And hopefully for our clients too, they actually like to come to the space and meet with us. Sometimes we're doing product tastings. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're presenting design and it's, it's very difficult to kind of, you know, LA is a very condensed city. So if you have a destination, it's a nice touch point when you're coming in and out of the city to have a, yeah, a, a space. Yeah, that was a big thing. It was de definitely a long-term goal that was on our goals list from the beginning so that we could make the space our own. So that's been exciting. So we always end up with the same five questions. And believe it or not, people hang around and want to know the answer to your questions because they like to get a little, know you a little bit better. First question, what's your favorite word? Ooh, it's hard to choose. I will say I think my favorite word is charisma. I think it's just that uh, thing that's not tangible that you've experienced and it's a fun word to say and it's uplifting. I think it gives personality. Yeah, I think that's my favorite right now. Question number two, are you more artistic or more mathematic? Definitely artistic, although I did always love math in school. I feel like in the creative world, it's all about the artistry and the eye for design. So yeah, I'm definitely on that side of things. Color over numbers. <laughs> Question number three, if you could share a meal with anyone past or present living or dead, who would it be and why? It's a tricky one, but... I think I am always intrigued by the celebrity chef world, but one of my favorite chefs is a British chef called Jamie Oliver. Mm -hmm. And he's also been around a decade or two, and it's been really fun to see how his food has evolved and his personality. And he's a family guy and that comes through in all of his touch points and I did walk past him in London once probably 10 or 12 years ago but I would love to have dinner and just pick his brain about all his business ventures and how he's wow. evolved yeah so. I sat down in, at a pub in London years ago and Heston Blumenthal was at the bar next cool. to me for British chefs there and he was quite inebriated at the time. He comes up with some crazy ideas. He does. So he probably he does. Absolutely. Them, uh, something to inspire him. Yeah. All right. Number four, what profession other than your own would you have liked to have tried? I think that's linked. Like when I think back to how I ended up in the food business, I think I would love to have been a chef. I love to cook. My dad had restaurants when I was growing up and every weekend we would go on a Sunday out for a dinner and it would be like research for my dad, but also connection as a family. And yeah, I just love the process. I find it, I don't really need to eat the food I create, although I obviously do. I just love to cook. I find it very calming. I love to create food and recipes and we sourdough. I've got a sourdough starter. Nice. That, the team and I went to do a cooking class last year in San Francisco. So I've been working on my sourdough. So yeah, some kind of I'm cooking. You, that's what I would do as well. Yeah. Let's see. Number five, if you could speak to yourself when you begin your career, what advice would you give yourself? I definitely wouldn't say the statistic on female owned creative agencies is scare. That would scare me. I would just say, I think that it's been a great to see female leadership and empowerment over the last probably five years. But I think in my younger years, I sat in rooms that were very male dominated mm. and maybe didn't have a strong opinion or a voice or shared my point of view. And that took a few years of confidence building. So I would just say, I think 
know your value, know your values and keep everything in alignment. So if you're aligned on that, then I think you put yourself in a good position, but sometimes you need to go through certain experiences before you feel confident. So yeah. they true to who you are. Great bit of advice. We always close up giving you a little bit of insight into what we have going on. As we mentioned, the Vertex Awards is actually open right now for entries. We'll have our first virtual summit of the year, the Velocity Private Brand and AI. So tapping into what's all the buzz right now with AI and how it can potentially impact private brand and anything from analytics to design to photography and global sourcing. There's all kinds of cool things going on there. On February 21st, we'll have another virtual summit in March on innovation. So really looking at product sourcing and manufacturing on innovation on March 27th. And then in May, we'll be back around our marquee event, which will be here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Once again, May 13th through the 15th at the Sheraton here in Charlotte. Tickets are available for all three of those events. The first two virtual ones are absolutely free. So please sign up and join us. About two hour sessions, a lot of great information. Velocity Conference tickets are $7.99 earlier bird right now. That's the best rate we've ever had on a ticket. So please join us. Go ahead and buy those tickets. Very good. Thank you very much, Danielle. Thank you.